Hey guys, it's time for another warrior poet profile. So we've done King David, we did uh, some of the Spartans like King Leonidas and Dinicus, and this time you guys gave the recommendation. Y'all said uh, Miyamoto Musashi, a guy who wrote the Five Rings. So uh, you guys who are giving shout outs and giving suge suggestions, I take those to heart and I really wanted to study this guy anyway because I've never really done an exhaustive study of any kind uh, deliberately on samurai. Uh, I, I respect just what I know about samurai because of their uh, kind of supposedly uh, samurai means one who serves. Uh, so somebody who's living for higher purpose, somebody who engages in scholarly exploits, somebody who is a master warrior. These are all kind of warrior poet ideals so that we can be uh, good defenders, lovers of people and lovers of truth and defenders of both good warrior poet stuff. So anyway, I came across, uh, across this guy. He was a ronin, which is basically a samurai that doesn't have a master. They just do whatever uh, they kind of want. And Bushido is their moral code that they're supposed to live by. Um, uh, some of you guys are just in love with this person. I was poised, ready to love Musashi, and I don't. Uh, so some of you guys may hate me for it. Uh, he was a 1600s guy, a uh, samurai, uh, though he wouldn't have used that word. Uh, he would call it Bushi, but uh, he had a shave top ahead, and he's known for the two-sword method. So he used two swords. Uh, he was a duelist. He won his first duel at the age of 12, and these were oftentimes to the death. And he engaged in over 60 duels with really, really impressive fighters that he bested and went undefeated. Uh, so um, anyway, he was an incredible fighter and an incredible tactician. My sources are The Life and Legacy of Miyamoto, Miyamoto Musashi by David Groff, The Five Rings or Five Spheres, 35 articles on strategy and the path walked alone, and I threw in some Wikipedia as a uh, cherry on top because, you know, that can't possibly be wrong. But anyway... I'm, trying to uh, do my homework. What I liked about Musashi is he's an amazing fighter and a brilliant tactician. So the book is flooded with really practical advice on uh, good war stuff. Uh, a lot of it's really out of context, so you gotta work a little bit to catch it up and glean something that you can use today. But another thing I liked, other than the fact that he's just an amazing fighter and tactician, giving that good uh, practical advice like moving the shadows. That's where your enemy is poised, ready for something, and then you rush like you're gonna do something, but then stop, and the person would have revealed what they were about to do. And then you can go ahead and attack freely, as Musashi would say, or uh, causing uh, contagion, which is really a uh, cool thing. Um, also, I like the, um, the fighting tactics and principles don't change over time and doesn't change over culture either. So this was really fun for me. Here's some fighting principles, uh, page 86. Um, so I hope you guys don't mind if I just flip along here. Uh, page 86, in setting the gaze, uh, make it large and set it broadly. There are two kinds of gaze, perceiving and looking. The gaze that perceives is strong. The gaze that looks is weak. To see far away things as if they're close and to see things that are close as though they're far away is the key in strategy. And what he's talking about is, guys, you need to be able to uh, take in an entire battlefield in a glance, understand the big picture, and then still have attention to detail in the small, right? This is just normal stuff. It's like, hey, don't get tunnel vision, right? Same stuff he's talking about then, we're talking about now. We just use different language. Uh, page 90, uh, this is pretty cool. It's talking about, hey, don't telegraph. But he says, there shouldn't be any repeatedly stepping with the same foot. Hey, don't telegraph. Don't let them know what's coming. Same type thing. Here's a really cool one. I love this. I highlight and underline and write in the margins of all my books. Even fictitious stuff. I dork out like that as good references. Page 201, when skilled people do something, they may appear to move quite slowly, but they never miss a beat. In anything, when trained people do it, they never appear to be rushed. You can kind of uh, hear the military guy behind him saying, yep, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. We don't go for speed, we go for efficiency, go for perfect execution and mastery of the skill set, and speed will be a natural byproduct of that efficiency, never the other way around. And he's just saying it hundreds of years ago, efficiency, not speed. Oh, page 164 is like, hey, don't do the same thing uh, twice. If you have to do the same thing twice, never do it three times in a row because that's a bad idea. What's he talking about? Hey, use varied use of cover. Don't do the same thing, don't telegraph again. So those fighting principles and tactics, it was encouraging to me as it didn't change. Another thing I really liked about Musashi, other than the fact the guy was just 
a really, really amazing fighter, really ahead of his time, is he was a fierce pragmatist in life and in battle. So I really like this, and this would have been really countercultural at the time. But he says, these other styles, other fighting styles, embellish and elaborate the fighting arts, rendering them flowery solely for the intention of making a living. Because they are fabrications made up to be sold, how can they possibly be the true way? So you had this big disdain for just kind of flowery art and form, and I really like that. You know, when, when Musashi wanted to strike, he wanted nothing to be wasted, nothing to just be done for the sake of form. He wanted almost every motion that he could make to be a fight-ending type motion. Uh, I, I can like attack, 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 and push the fight. And so I love the uh, aggression and the efficiency of his fighting style. And I have no, I, uh, no doubt this guy was a dangerous, dangerous guy. Uh, so there's stuff that I really liked about him. Now what I disliked, and there's plenty. Uh, I don't think he really exhibited the warrior poet ideal. I don't think he really stood for a uh, higher purpose. It's absent in his writings. What I do see is a lot of arrogance. I see a lot of vanity where he's... Uh, just trying to be the best fighter that he can be. And it's not a means to an end for Musashi. It seems to be uh, um, he's mistaken the means for the end as the end in and of itself. And I think that's a, a, a mistake. Uh, I can kind of support this with evidence and the idea. So some of you who are freaking out and be like, no, I love this guy. You get to still love this guy. And I could be just wrong and maybe I interpreted stuff wrong and I'm an idiot. Who knows? But just... I was poised, ready to really like him, and I don't. Uh, I don't. I kind. I even called a, a ranger buddy of mine who's really into bushido and samurai, whatever, and he's got that going on. And I really respect this guy. I like him. And I'm like, hey man, I don't like Musashi. I'd like to, but I don't think he was like warrior poet kind of stuff. I'm like, who would be good? And he's like, oh, Honda Tada Tada Katsu. I suck at the name. Honda Tadakatsu, and he was apparently a brave Japanese general, fought in over 100 battles, again undefeated. He's a contemporary of Musashi's and uh, is a soldier fighting for home, family, country kind of thing. And I think he uh, more exhibited the Bushido ideals than Musashi did. So I would be really excited in retrospect to study him as a warrior poet because w Musashi seems to be a pseudo-philosophical thug. Uh, but um, that's my own bent. So you guys don't mind if I'm honest with you. You're not going to put me over the coals because I had a different opinion. And if you do, I guess I don't really care. Um, let's see. Uh, he was silent in his book on really protecting and loving others. Uh, so it wasn't for country or for God or for higher purpose at all. He just wanted to be a... Uh, a great fighter. He's not mentioning some of those protect others kind of ideals. It's just absent. And I know that's an argument from silence, but it's a clue. Uh, he also does many references spiritually to Confucianism, uh, Taoism, and Buddhism, but I believe he was using pieces of this system, latching on his tools as a means to being a better fighter and uh, well-rounded person. He rejected the systems as a whole. He wasn't a very spiritual guy in the 1600s Japanese sense. Uh, so here you go, I'll, I'll even basically watch him throw out all the religions uh, and systems as well. And you can kind of feel a, a, a pang of uh, arrogance in this as well. But as long as you do not know the true way, which Musashi did and his contemporaries didn't, it does not matter whether it's the Buddhist law or the laws of the world of men, you'll think of them as correct ways and believe them to be good things. However, from the perspective of the true way, the major models and standards in the world seen together are all the biases of individual minds and based on these distortions go against the true way. Translation, hey, there's Buddhism and all the different religious systems or philosophical systems, but they're wrong and my way is right. Uh, so he's dismissing them. I don't like that. Um, let's see, and even just kind of this, uh, the arrogance of, hey, and, you know, page 45, he's talking about, once I knew the true way, I never needed a teacher again in anything. Uh, and maybe I misunderstood him out of context, so I'm going to give him a little bit of grace and be like, maybe I misunderstood along, explain this, but these are just my impressions that I'd like to investigate more. Um, also, uh, let's see, he did something really obnoxious to me, and it'd be like if, hey guys, listen up, this is really important. 
in every couple sentences or so, I kept saying, hey, listen to this. This is really important. Eventually, you'd start to disbelieve me and not think, I don't think it's really important. I think you're trying to prop up your words by calling attention to how important they are. And he kept doing that. It was really obnoxious. I got so annoyed by it, I started crossing it out. Kind of like, quit telling me that. Uh, but he's like, and thoroughly investigate this and experiment with this daily. The next page, you should investigate this exhaustively. Uh, next page, you must investigate this thoroughly. Again, next page, you must investigate this thoroughly. Uh, and um, maybe it's okay, but it was just obnoxious to me. So I started crossing them out. Um, you see, I'm pretty eccentric guy uh, myself. So I probably have uh, obnoxious little things uh, to you as well, if that be, sorry, uh, just uh, yeah, mute it for those parts. Anyway, another thing that I really don't like is duels were to the death oftentimes. Now, uh, you know, so all those early duels, Musashi, he would travel around, find a master swordsman, some respected teacher, be like, hey, I challenge you to see who's better, samurai or ronin. And then they'd fight to the death. So really, as you kill another great warrior, you're depriving that nation of a great hero and that local community of a role model. Uh, it, it's the opposite of patriotism. It's destruction from within. It's a civil war of their elite forces. Uh, so, I mean, that what vain glory. Uh, so I, I, anyway, I really didn't like that. Now, uh, he later uh, kind of you know, midway through his dueling career, stops dueling to the death, and now he's going to carry a wooden sword instead. And I thought, good job, Musashi. Quit murdering people for sport. So um, I thought that was really good. And some, uh, you know, so anyway, I just uh, thought we'd go ahead and point that out. So uh, this is M uh, Miyamoto Musashi. Uh, his five rings. You can read it if you want. There's some real good stuff that you can glean from him, his lifestyle, and what he said. Uh, not so much a warrior poet, but I got a new uh, warrior poet coming up next. This will be George Washington, and I've already started reading on it. I'm excited about it. Guys, go ahead and like, share, subscribe, uh, and uh, thanks so much for staying tuned. Warrior poets, train hard and train smart, and read even stuff you don't agree with. It stretches us and makes us stronger. Peace, guys.